Hello friends! The rocks and pebbles are really excited about this lesson today because it talks about how they were born. And it also talks about how everything on the whole earth was created. This is the creation story in the first book of the Bible, Genesis 1 and 2. So stick with me and we are going to let the rocks tell great Bible stories. This is the very first story in the Old Testament of the Bible. Now, the Bible is a collection of a lot of books, almost 40 in the Old Testament. And today we're going to do the very first story in the very first book. And here is Genesis. And in the very first story, it's the story of the creation of how God created the earth and all the things on it. It includes things like the structure of the earth, like the light and the land and the waters, as well as life on the earth, such as fish and birds and all the animals, as well as the people like you and me. God made them all. So that's the story that we're going to see today. Now, it was Moses who actually got to see all of this. God gave him a vision and then Moses wrote it down. And that's how we have this Genesis chapter one and two creation story. Today, I'm going to show you some pictures that I've taken of some of my most favorite places. It just shows the beauty that God has created on the earth. And maybe it will get you even more excited to go exploring yourself outside. And then I want to share with you a song about the animals that I wrote. And it's really short and really fun. I sing it almost every morning when I wake up in the morning. So we'll learn that song and then we'll let the rocks build the animals in the song that we do. That'll be fun. And then I have a really fun little art activity if you want to do some art with me. It only takes one rock. Do you have one rock? So it'll take one rock and a piece of paper and a pencil or some kind of marker. But when it's time to do our activity, I'll let you know and you can pause the video and go get your art supplies and then we'll create this together. Have you ever wondered how the earth got created? How it got started? Well, you probably already know that God created all of it. And it's kind of neat to know that he had this order and structure to the way that he did it. Well, would you believe that we learn about this right in the very first sentence of the Old Testament? In verse one of Genesis chapter one, it says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Right there. So we know that he created these things for us. Let's look at some of the beautiful things that he's created. These are places I like to go when I go hiking. Some of them are in Oregon and in Washington, Idaho, Utah. I'm kind of on that side of the United States, so that's where I go. But just look at how beautiful these things are. God created so much beauty if we just go outside and look for it. Sometimes I see magnificent waterfalls or I might just see beautiful landscapes or sunsets or even little critters. I'll even turn over rocks to see what's under those to see what God has created. So much beauty and life and vibrancy. As amazing as those beautiful pictures show the earth to be, the plants and the water and just how lovely it is, well, he made something even greater. He made the animals. And the animals are magnificent. What animals do you love? Well, I happen to have two kitty cats and I also love puppy dogs. Oh, but I love birds and I love any animal that I ever see. So let's just sing this song about animals. It's so much fun. And then we'll let the rocks build some animals while we sing it as well. But let me teach it to you first. Let's run over to my living room so I've got more room and we can sing it. What would the world be like without all the animals? Even just the sweet little ones like the birds and the cats and the dogs and the big ones like the lions and giraffes and zebras and everything. They make the world so fun and interesting and beautiful. So let's sing this little song about the animals. In order to sing the song, you need to choose the animals you want to represent. So maybe for this time, let's choose a lion. And lions, what sound do they make? Roar. Something like that. Can you make the sound? Roar. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna do a lion with the roar. And then how about a zebra? A zebra and what sound do they make? They're kind of like a horse. So maybe we could do 
You want to try it? You just kind of blow through your lips. Okay, that'll be our zebra. And here's how the song goes. Okay, here we go. Good morning, good morning. I stretch like a lion in the morning. I reach to the sky. I yawn with a great big sigh. Roar! I've been given a brand new day. Okay, do the next animal, which we decided would be a zebra, okay? Good morning, good morning. I stretch like a zebra in the morning. I reach to the sky. I yawn with a great big sigh. <laughs> I've been given a brand new day. And then you just keep choosing your animals and singing the song. Let's try, how about kitties and, there's kitties behind me, huh? <laughs> kitties and puppies and how about birds, birdies? Okay, we need sound. So the kitties will be meow and the puppies can be ruff ruff and the birdies can be chirp chirp, okay? Or they can be whatever sounds you want. Okay, let's try it. Here we go, ready? Good morning, good morning. I stretch like a kitty in the morning. I reach to the sky. I yawn with a great big sigh, meow. I've been given a brand new day. Good morning, good morning. I stretch like a puppy in the morning. I reach to the sky. I yawn with a great big sigh, ruff. I've been given a brand new day. Good morning, good morning. I stretch like a birdie in the morning. I reach to the sky. I yawn with a great big sigh. Chirp, chirp. I've been given a brand new day. And you just keep going. And at the end, on your very last one, you could say, I've been given a brand new day. Okay, and that just helps you start your whole day so great. But the point is that Heavenly Father created the earth and all the animals in it. And we can have so much joy by loving and taking care of the animals. Now, do you know what's even more awesome than even the beautiful plants and the wonderful animals? It's you and me. So let's tell the story of Adam and Eve in Rocks and Pebbles. Have you heard of them? They were the very first humans put on the planet. And so when we read about Adam and Eve, we can learn about ourselves because we're all part of that human family. So let's make Adam and Eve with rocks on this fun activity that I have. All you're going to need is one rock, but if you have a collection of rocks, bring those because you could use a whole bunch of rocks on this. And then you'll want a piece of paper and something to write with. And I will show, I will draw it for you and then we'll place our rocks on there and see how they fit in. Okay, let's try it. Okay, here is our fun rock art project. I'm excited about this. I hid it underneath this little piece of paper so you could be excited. Now, I did say that you only needed to have one rock and that's true, you can do this. But if you have multiple rocks, then it's even more fun. So you decide how many rocks you wanna use. Are you ready? Okay, we're going to make Adam and Eve who have just been created in the Garden of Eden. <laughs> kind of fun, huh? So I made this little template with all the little drawings that you can go ahead and print out. And then you can just add your rocks on top of that template. Or it's a pretty simple design. So you could just take a blank piece of paper and you could do the whole thing all by yourself. It's up to you how you want to do it. Now, take a look at what this looks like with no rocks. So that's the template. And what is so fun is that you can go ahead and pick any rock that you might have and you can put it on the template and see if it works for you. Now, if you have big giant rocks, it doesn't work so well. But if you just have smaller rocks, then it works pretty good. Like pick any of my rocks that you wanna try out. Like, let's just try this one. So we'll put it right on for Eve's body and then we can pick a circle now, I always collect all of my circle rocks. Anytime I see a circle outside on the ground, any shape, like this isn't really a circle, it's even more square, but anything that looks kind of round, I collect. And then I have lots to choose from and I can just plop it on and see if it looks like it's the right size. And that is, and I might try this one. 
And I'm like, okay, I get the idea, but maybe that's a little big. And so if I have choices, it's more fun. And then I like to organize them. So we can choose any rock we want. Let's, boy, I wish you could tell me what you're choosing. Let's choose this one for Adam. <laughs> okay, that's really long. But because I made my lines super long, it's okay if you cover them up. And we'll just keep covering them up until we like what we have. And then we can pick a little head. And then how about a body for Eve? Okay, that one's a little plump, but it's sure super cute. And then we'll look in here for a little head. And what do we have? I think that looks really good. So my point is, it's really easy to do this. You can try all of your rocks until you get a couple that you think are really great. Okay, now you probably might be wondering why do we have two trees here? And they're very important because when God first created the earth and he's creating the light and the dark, separating light and dark, and he's creating the earth and the land and all the structure so the life can grow on it. And then he creates all the beautiful grasses and the trees and the, all the beautiful things that we see. Well, then he created this beautiful area called the Garden of Eden and his crowning creation, his best work he left for last, and that was to make Adam and Eve. Do you want to hear the scripture that goes with us? In Genesis 1, verse 26 and 27, there's a quote right from God. He said it himself. Now, the Bible was not written in English. It was originally written in Hebrew, and that's a different language. If you go back to the Hebrew word that was translated into the word man, it actually meant human. So in Genesis 1, 26 and 27, God said, let us make man, but replace that with human, because that's both man and woman. So God said, let us make humans in our own image after our own likeness, male and female, he created them. So I think that's just astonishing that we learn right there in the very first chapter of the Old Testament in the Bible, we learn that God made us after his image. So we look like God a little bit, just like we look like our parents a little bit. Well, we look like God a little bit. So I think that is super cool. That's a super important verse. And then first he only made Adam. So let's do Adam again because it's so fun. Okay, which rock shall we use? Uh, let's, oh, I have some over here that are interesting. Let's try this one for Adam. So God said, let us make Adam. So he made Adam. And then once he made Adam, he said, and this is a quote. He said, it is not good that man should be alone. That's Genesis 2, 18. God said, it's not good that man should be all by himself. He needs a friend, a help me, an equal to work with him. So God then made Eve. So we'll get a rock. This is a pretty neat rock right here. We can do it this way. And we need a head. And that works with it like that. I think that's cute, like her arm out there. Or we'll turn it around, looks like her skirt. That is super cute. So he makes Eve. In Genesis 2, 23, it says, she shall be called woman. So we learned that man meant human. Well, woman means human who gives life. <laughs> Isn't that neat? So the actual real scriptures are back in the Hebrew verse was more that God made a human and a human who gives life because women can have babies and be mamas. <laughs> I think that's wonderful. And then Adam gave her a name and you know what that name is. What is her name? It's Eve. And would you like to know what that name means? The name means mother of all living. So Adam named the first woman in the whole world, mother of all living. And I think that is beautiful. Okay, let's try another. Let's see, those two are pretty neat. I got these really unusual rocks here that I played with quite a bit. Like, what do you do with these? You keep turning your rocks around until you have it the way you think would be neat. And let's turn this around to be like her dress. And I like to pull her down a little bit and him over. Oh, that's super cute too. Do you see how using all kinds of rocks work? You just have to kind of play around with the rocks you have or go out and collect some more to see how that's going to look for you. 
Let's try another set of rocks. I'll put those away. Which of these look interesting? I had already kind of paired them up before we started this. You know, there's something else that God said in Genesis that is really helpful. He said in chapter 2, verse 24, he said, A man shall leave his mother and father. So when this little boy grows up, God says he should leave his mother and father and cleave unto his wife that they shall be one. And that is a beautiful idea. Do you have a best friend or somebody you really enjoy? And sometimes you just feel like, oh, you just love being with them. And you just want to be, play with them all the time and share all your feelings and thoughts. Well, that's what it's like to have a husband or wife or how it's meant to be is to have your very best friend and somebody that is so precious and special to you. So what do you think of those two rocks? I'd love to get these kind of triangle rocks when I do females or women or girls because it's a little easier to tell that I mean that to be a girl and maybe a more straight rock to be a boy. And that's why you'll see me kind of put a little skirt as that's how it's supposed to look like a dress or a skirt. Well, let's try something else and see how it looks. How about these cute little rocks? Aren't those sweet? They have these strange markings on them, which is why I collected. I love rocks that have shapes and have little marks on them. So let's try to go this way or this side. Let's see, let's try this. If you want a little trick in depicting a woman, if you do the more narrow side on top, but for a man, See, you can do it like that. That looks a little feminine, but if you put the narrow side on bottom for the man and it's more broad shouldered on top, sometimes it looks a little more. And you can tell when we're talking about masculine and feminine or male and female or boy and girl. Yeah, God made genders. He made us to be boys and girls. And I think it's cute to make their heads touch because it shows just that they love each other. They care about each other. So the next thing God said in Genesis about Adam and Eve, he said in Genesis chapter 1, verse 28, it said, God blessed them, which I think is so sweet that one of the first thing God does is he blesses them because he loves them so much. And that means he loves you and me so much. He blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Now, those are just big, fancy words for God basically saying, hey, go have families. My whole plan for the whole earth is to have families where people can trust and love each other and take care of each other and have joy. When we take care of each other and there is trust and love, then there is great joy in families. So that's what God said, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth, have babies and have families and love. Wow, these rocks were really cute. Do you want to, what if you just have some basic oval rocks? You can't find any with funny shapes. You just have found some, maybe some river rocks and they're just kind of roundish and oval. They work beautifully. Let me show you. We'll do this one for Eve and this one for Adam. These are kind of wiggly. I might have to turn them over to see. And we could even stand them up a little bit. How's that? <laughs> Wake that up. There we go. See, just round ones work so well. Well, the Lord commanded Adam and Eve when he put them in this beautiful garden. And he said to them, of every tree freely eat, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat. Well, that's an interesting command. But so there were these two very special trees in the Garden of Eden, the tree of life and the tree of knowledge. And there was this important command not to eat of this fruit, but it was just fine to eat of all the other fruit in the garden. And you know, with your template, if you have any colors, it's kind of fun to just start coloring or adding anything you want to the template. And I thought since the fruit was so important, maybe we should give it a color.
And how about the tree of knowledge? What color shall we give that? Hmm. There, already this is looking more beautiful. You know, it'd be fun to make all kinds of colors. You know, we could put some green grass on our picture. Like this hill looks kind of green and pretty. Ooh, that's pretty. And maybe we even want to color the grass down here. And while we're at it, let's just go ahead and color our flower. And you could add a whole bunch more flowers to this. Just all over the page. Just add all the flowers you want. That would be pretty. You could even add little dots of color to be like the flowers that are in the meadow. Let's try some other rocks. You know, the very last chapter, or the very last verse of Genesis it just, I love what it says. It says, God saw everything that he made. Now that's the whole planet Earth and the, the stars and the sky and the moon and the sun and everything on the Earth and his, the people that he created. And it simply says, God saw everything he made and behold, it was very good. <laughs> very good. So when he saw that he created us, he wasn't like, oh, I didn't do very good. He was like, wow, it's very good. So the next time you look in the mirror, I want you to say, wow, I'm very good. Because it's true, that's how God feels about you. <laughs> but there is one thing I would love to say about Eve. You know, she was the final creation of this whole process of creating the earth. And I think it's pretty special that he saved the very best for last, that he made Adam and Eve, and women are very special. I think it helps to remember that, that we are all, men and women, girls and boys, are all very special and we should treat each other with care. And God said we should treat all of his creations with care and love. <laughs> That's pretty easy to do when it's so beautiful outside and the animals are so sweet. All right, are you getting the idea of how to do this? Now, I did say that you could do it with just one rock. And how would you do that? Well, you could simply get your marker and you can fill in the rest. So if you wanted to, I like to start with a pencil because I make lots of mistakes. <laughs> and so if you wanted to, you could create a body yourself. You could simply draw something that would be like the rock and just draw it in here and maybe put a head there, just like that. And if you want to create a body for Adam, you could do that. So you could just draw a big circle with a big head. There you go. Now you didn't need any rocks at all. But if you happen to have one, maybe you only have one rock, then you can go ahead and lay it on there. And that's okay. And what's fun about that is that you can leave your template just like this and then the next time you're outside, you can be looking for rocks because maybe you have a lot of rocks, but you didn't feel like any of them fit well on here. So now you have something to look forward to outside. And then when you're able to find a rock that you like, you can go ahead and add it to your picture until one day you'll have all the pieces that you want to add. Now, what's kind of fun too is to add shoes. Now I get into the gravel and that's just the little teeny tiny rocks. And when I'm in the gravel, I look for little circles and I look for little tiny long rocks because these make good arms and legs and I use them all the time. So, and then I organize them and put them in my little containers so I always can find them. And then when you wanna make shoes, it's really fun because you can start matching them and seeing, okay, do I have any two that are roughly similar? that I could use for shoes. And I could say, okay, these two are kind of similar. So I can put it here and I can put it there. 
And now that gets really cute, I think. And we'll give her some shoes too, here and here. And you can just keep trying out those little ones until you have it. You could even do little hands if you wanted to. I'll put them there. Isn't that cute? Now, another little thing I love to do when I'm doing females is because I'm always trying to make a girl look like a girl. And sometimes a girl could have a long ponytail. And so I can just go mink. There. And now she has a ponytail. And if I really like it, then I could take my big fat marker and I could color that in. That would be dark. So if you want to add a ponytail on there, you sure can. Okay, well, that's how easy these are to make. I hope that you will download this little template because it has, it's just an eight and a half by 11 and it has two on one page. So with the two on one page, you can just print it out, cut it in half, and then you'll have two of these to play with. And you could just make as many as you want. And if you've got a whole classroom of lots of kids, you can go ahead and print that template out as many times as you want. So I hope you love this. Remember that God created the world and everything in it, and that's why it's all so beautiful. And if you want to color your trees or color any part of this template, you sure can, because it's fun. Just remember, God loves you. He made you, and he thinks you're fantastic. <laughs> and you can turn to him, pray to him, and go to him with everything, and he will help you. He will comfort you. And he'll help you through all of your challenges. Your challenges might not go away, but he can help them be doable. That you can do all the hard things that come up in life. Okay, take care. Remember, God loves you and I love you.